For the Feast of the Holy Family, I decided to do something different this year. I brought over this glorious painting uh, from the rectory living room. This is a painting of the flight into Egypt of the Holy Family, painted by a guy named George Hitchcock, uh, died in 1913, I think, but uh, big time American painter, kind of impressionistic. And that painting, the original, is hanging in the National Gallery, Gallery of Art at the Smithsonian. So I want you to take a good look at it. If you can't see it, then come up after mass and take a look at it, because I find it fascinating. I would like every family to have that painting. I'm thinking about it. getting some bulk frames and getting those images printed. I bet I can get a whole bunch of those made for less than 10 bucks a piece. All right, and give it to you as a gift next year. I'd like families to have that, because to me, it captures and freezes in time this moment during the flight of Egypt let flight into Egypt where it looks so beautiful when you look at the painting, all the colors, beautiful shining sun, nice day, nice pastoral setting, flowers and bees and birds. And there's Mary, Joseph and Jesus, the baby Jesus. And meanwhile, if you know the context of the story, it's uh, you know, there's something horrifying happening behind them, namely the slaughter of the innocents. And they're in flight on some old forgotten road because surely you're not going to travel on the main roads a little vulnerable family like this that's what i think of when i look at it i'm like joseph is uh guiding them you see him standing back behind a bit and he's uh going by lesser travel roads shall we say just to do an end run around possible brigands bandits whatever thieves um, so yes it looks so nice so beautiful look a family oh they're going for a picnic no they're going into egypt into a foreign land they have no idea what's ahead of them life is an adventure folks that's adventure right there an existential moment in the life of the Holy Family captured in that painting that is worthy of reflection, that we can all relate to. An adventure. Life is an adventure. Webster's Unabridged New Universal Dictionary defines an adventure as a bold undertaking in which hazards are to be encountered and the issue is staked upon unforeseen events. Going down into Egypt, yes, there were a lot of Jews there. Alexandria, Egypt was like New York City today, okay? Many, many Jews lived in Alexandria at this time. There were many Jews living in Egypt. I mean, they would be able to plug in uh, to some community within there. And Joseph doesn't probably have his tools, you know? He's thinking, if I had known this was going to happen, I would have had all my tools. He doesn't probably have anything, hardly at all. But he's got it up here, and he's got it in here. He knows. He's sitting there walking behind. You see him back a ways with his staff. He's probably thinking, planning, calculating, you know. How am I going to lead us through all this, navigate through all this? And Mary with the baby Jesus there. She's seen, you know, she's probably, you know, who wouldn't be apprehensive a little bit here, but uh, relatively calm. I am holding the Son of God in my arms. God obviously has a plan. He's the one that warned us so that we were able to get out of there uh, without uh, becoming another victim of Herod. All right, look, uh, they aren't just muddling through on their own. This is the spiritual life in action. This is faith in action right here. These people are being guided by more than just their own thinking. It's much more interesting that way, isn't it? And more adventurous to me. Uh, discerning, being a discerning person. A person who discerns is uh, not somebody who's just making up their mind. Discernment involves seeking the will of another. In Christian terms, when we think of discernment, 
we're thinking of somebody who's always in consultation with the will of another, asking God what he wants. Like St. Paul, knocked down on the road to Damascus. Who are you, Lord? I'm Jesus of Nazareth. Lord, what do you want me to do? Paul's words to our Lord on the road to Damascus, blind. Lord, what do you want me to do? It should be going through our head all the time. I don't care if you're laying on the couch watching Gilligan's Island and you're not sure whether you should get up and do the dishes or you should go do an errand or you should help your kid with his homework. But you're not quite sure. It's a little small domestic, you know, ordinary decisions we make all day long. Ask the Lord. Consult with the Lord. That's faith in action. That's being a spiritual person. It should be our knee-jerk reaction, our instinctual reaction to every decision point we reach. We should be in consultation all day long. All right, Lord, what do you want me to do? Lord, what do you want me to do next? A feeling for the promptings of the Holy Spirit. Sensing, feeling, talking to the Lord. Uh, asking for his guidance. That's what we see over there. Not just a family based on their own thinking, muddling through their lives. Uh, but a family who's actively pursuing the will of God, perfect example of the spiritual life for all of us.